when did you feel like you were in that good groove and trying to get back to where like you were in like fighting mode and then getting signed to NXT? Um, when I got released from NXT. Perfect. Good timing. Yeah. Yep. I was in the best shape of my life. Yeah, you were. I yeah. was. No. And I feel like that was like a notable thing of like, shit, look at you. You looked yeah. great. And it threw me for a loop because I consistently asked for that pressure. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Just, you know, any it, it should be easy with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know what I look like. I know what my disposition is. Mm-hmm. Just use me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, there was stuff going on with Jess and Shayna was doing her thing. Mm-hmm. Use me. Yeah. Give me that experience. I'm not afraid of failing. I keep saying that to everyone. Yeah. You see, like, the great ones, you know? They've been put in those positions for a reason. Yeah. Because they have failed. Yeah. And then they they learned. Mm-hmm. It's a nonverbal trust, and I, you know, sometimes maybe I talk a little too much because I'm not able to do as much, but, like, it's a trust that I really want to earn. I believe myself. Why shouldn't I? Yeah. Like, certainly. Seriously. Um, what is, uh, it's kind of like, what's your stance on, like, being underestimated in those moments? Like, what, whether it was, like, at NXT to, like, things that you want to achieve now, what are the things that you want people to see in you that you know you're able to bring to the table? Like, at NXT, I was told by multiple people, they're like, oh, Marie. If I had like 10 of you, you know, this place would be so fucking completely different. And I'm like, but I'm not doing shit. Right. So you'd have 10 really hardworking, too nice wrestlers. <laughs> like they're just, you know, beautiful, powerful, all of that stuff, but too, too nice and not really like understanding who they are. And um, I, I, I never understood what that meant. Like I just, I, did, I didn't. And then like when I left, I... I just really wanted to understand, like, what performer I wanted to be. Yeah. Like, uh, so I felt like I never really got a proper intro- introduction. Right. You know, like, you know, those those photos, like, oh, I can fucking talk about this now. Like, the photos with that when you got signed to NXT with, like, Triple H, yeah. where he's, like, shaking their hand. I never got that photo. Mm. And that just sat with me. I wanted that fucking photo. <laughs> That meant a lot to me. Yeah. No, it's it's a moment. Sure. But it was, we had to kind of like play it cool, you know? And I'm like, fuck that. Like, I want yeah. that photo. Yeah. I thought that shit was going on for me that I was going to have a chance to like, I wanted to, I just wanted to have a good match and then get back there. And I'm like, we're getting this fucking photo, right? Like, yeah, that's my yeah, moment. Yeah. And I never got yeah. it. And it's fine. But that didn't sit well with me. And then I realized I underestimated myself. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I, I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to that shit. And uh, maybe that's what needed to happen. I needed to go away and I needed to like mold myself. Like Roddy really helped me. We, had, we talk a lot about wrestling. It's just impossible not to go a day hey, without it, I know how that goes. And it's like, <laughs> and then wrestling is all, it's fucking opinion based, mm-hmm. right? It, and then you have this idea of something or how someone is supposed to look and another person doesn't. And that's a conversation of why. And then it's right. like, well, it will make money. And I'm like, I'm a terrible Jew. I don't fucking care about money. <laughs> like, I just don't care about, I'm terrible about that shit. Am I, I don't know. I, <laughs> but you just, you have your passion projects and it's like the things that you were passionate about. And it's not necessarily about like what, you know, what's going to draw in this moment. And like, I don't know. And I, I eventually think. will be, I will give my ancestors, you know, that <laughs> for them. But like right now, like it's just, this, I'm 34. Mm-hmm. Like, I am probably the most athletic I've been. Hell yeah. In, like, my entire life. And I feel like I'm not even really pushing myself, like, outside of this. Like, I I haven't been tr- doing the things that, like, fill my cup. You know what I what, mean? What What is that? What fills your jiu-jitsu cup? Jiu-jitsu consistently. Like, I have this goal of getting my jiu-jitsu black belt. It's going to be in my life for the rest of my life. Whenever I feel lost, I go to the mat. That's what helps me. Yeah. And... That's been me my entire fucking life. Yeah. Um, so that's a goal of mine. I've been neglecting that. And like when you neglect something, it just doesn't, it kind of rolls downhill, right? Mm-hmm. And then like I know when I'm having inconsistent, like inconsistencies in my matches. Like if you like look overall and I'm I'm not having these kinds of conversations 
with anyone other than my husband. Right. But if there's like, if professional wrestling has levels, right. That that's like a, a conversation you need to earn to have, right. You know, and uh, I get that, but I want to, in order to be able to earn to have it, I need to be put in that arena and I need to, I want those matches. I fucking, I want to learn. And that's something that you're actively doing. Yeah. Right. And like that, to have those opportunities come up to get more of the experience, learn from those things, learn from the mistakes, learn while you're out there, be under the learning tree of whoever to be able to have that experience. Where do you like start with that? I mean, you're, you are going to be starting to do some other yeah. shows, right? Yeah. Like I, um, before I got signed with AEW, I was doing like indie shows here and there, but then the schedule just got crazy because yeah. then I got signed and I was like, oh fuck, like I'm spending no time with my family yeah. and you know, I just decided not to do anything else. And then I, I took a, a couple here and there, but you know, for me, because everybody, any pro wrestling is special and you can do it however the fuck you want to do it. Right. That's what People say there isn't just one fucking way up the mountain. There's multiple. Yeah. So for me, I need to approach whatever matches that are in my future. It's kind of like a fight for me. Yeah. Like I, I want time to prepare. Yeah. I want time to understand what I need to bring to the table. Yeah. You know, and I like that pressure. And I, I just feel like it would be more like exclusive and it just goes back to Fuck, I just makes wrestling special Yeah, it, for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So Marina that we see in AEW and Marina that we've been able to see in something like Bloodsport, how is Bloodsport for you? Because that seems like that's your, like, that's your arena. That's your wheelhouse, obviously. Ah, Duh. thank you. <laughs> but, like, when you're when you're in there doing that and obviously being able to work with Josh and you guys go way back, I mean, what, what, were, what are some of the conversations that you have with, like, Josh about this stuff? Because, I mean, he's, he's a pretty brilliant mind when it yes. comes to all this stuff as well and blending the two styles he knows how to be like marina shut the fuck up <laughs> simplify this yeah we simplified we simplified we simplified that was the game plan and just goes back to basics yeah. like you know like i have i have a good enough foundation that i can lean on if i ever feel like i'm in trouble i don't need to like you know yeah. just try harder than that reaction mm -hmm. Cause the reactions that are what, what are special, but he, um, he honed, he, on the, on the, like the, the two shows that I did, he honed it in for me like both times. The second one, I wasn't like, I was, I was into it, but I, I feel like I, I could have, I could have killed her. Like I just could have <laughs> like done something else, but you know, you like review whatever. Anyway, it made me, I, at Bloodsport was where I felt that dragon feeling. Yeah. Like that dragon feeling that everybody fucking talks about having the perfect match. Yeah, we already know that it doesn't exist because it has to come to you. Yeah. And I worked my fucking ass off and it came to me that night. Did you know it when it happened? <sighs> I'm going to cry because no. it's like... It's sorry. No, it's um, okay. It was just so cool. Cause like, it was like the first time that I felt like this is what it's supposed to feel like. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I wasn't used to people cheering me mm -hmm. and everybody stood the fuck up and I'm like, and that just like honed me the fuck in, mm -hmm. you know? And I, damn, I like. And they're chasing it. Yeah. Like, and a lot of like, just motivation from Rhonda went into that one. Like, I was just, in a, she helped me so much, like, with my head, and so did Roddy. Like, he was there with me every day, but, like, what really let me f understand that that it happened was I got a voicemail from Roddy, and he knows how nervous I was. And he was just, like, left me, like, a little voice message, and he was teary-eyed in it, and he was like, you fucking killed it. Like, and he, he was just like, enjoy it. You fucking killed it. That was beautiful. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I was just like, you know, it yeah. was, you know, I'm not, I like really made me happy. And it was apparent to the people who love me. Yeah. And like, that's, I don't like what, that's what I want. Mm -hmm.